Welcome back to the Auto Car Show and we continue with our exhaustive coverage of the Auto Expo 2014. Honestly, the list of cars seems to be endless, but then that's the fun of it, isn't it? And the future was being boldly explored by Mahindra. The future, as they say, is electric and it's no different when it comes to motorsports and as you can see behind me, that is a Formula E racer. This car is all electric, it's an all new series and Mahindra is the only Indian company to have a team running in this series from this year. And uh, this is a very high-tech, all-electric car, which is going to surely teach Mahindra a lot about electric powertrains. And that aside, what the Formula E series is going to do is show people a green and a high-tech alternative to Formula One. While the 270 bhp Formula E racer is meant for racetracks across the globe, Mahindra had something for our Indian roads as well. Now that looks like a regular XUV, right? But it isn't. What it is, is a XUV hybrid prototype. And you'll see it when it spins around that it's really quite different underneath. In that nose isn't that MOC 2.2 litre engine. Instead what it has is the three-cylinder diesel motor from the Quanto, which is then mated to an electric motor. The motor's mounted along with the engine, while the battery pack is stored at the rear. But what makes this hybrid really unique is that it still runs with a manual transmission. While 0 to 60, 0 to 100 figures aren't going to improve, what will though is the drivability. Because when you're off boost, when the turbo hasn't spooled up, the electric motors will supplant the power required, the torque required and get you going. And then if the turbo is spooled up, you get the conventional punch of the diesel motor. This works as a parallel hybrid and it can't run in a pure electric mode only. But when it comes to electric cars, Mahindra had an electric Verito on display. This EV is intended for production and has a range of 80 kilometers with a top speed of 85 kilometers per hour. But if you want something electrifyingly fast and exciting, then Mahindra's Reva had this. The Halo electric sports car is claimed to accelerate to 100 kilometers an hour from standstill in under 8 seconds. It has a top speed of 160 km an hour and a range of 200 km is also likely. But if you want something to sample soon, then take a look at this Quanto. It has an automated manual gearbox from Ricardo. You can expect the Quanto Auto Shift to go on sale sometime this year. Nearby, Tata Motors also had an AMT on display. If pushed into production, the Tata Nano would be the world's cheapest automatic. Apart from becoming easier to drive, a fifth gear has also been added and there's also a larger 25-litre fuel tank, all of which helps to improve usability and this Nano is expected to go on sale in 2015. The Tata Nano had another reason to wear its new happy look because it finally gets an openable boot and this feature is expected to be launched on the Nano shortly. Also on display at the Tata stall was the Nexon. This concept previews an EcoSport rival that is based on the Vista platform. While the Nexon is cool to look at, it still feels a bit more like a hopped up hatch rather than a chunky SUV. And Tata wasn't the only one showing compact SUV concepts. One of its most serious rivals was Volkswagen's Taigun. This simply styled but chunky car is a shoe-in for the Indian market. Currently though, VW is working hard to get the price right to make it work in India. If and when launched, it is likely to come with VW's new 1.5 litre TDI motor. It is also likely to be stretched to get more space inside the cabin. GM's concept was called the Adra, which means stone in Sanskrit. This was a macho and sleek looking concept based on General Motors' global small vehicle platform. 
although it was developed entirely at GM's technical center in Bangalore. But right now, GM isn't saying whether the ADRA is little more than a possibility for the future. Honda's XS1 is an exciting looking crossover concept. And while we can drool at the thought of a Honda compact SUV, this concept is little more than eye candy right now. Now we're focusing on this concept from Renault, it's called the Quid. A couple of things really make it very interesting. First and foremost, something to be proud of. Renault's designed this concept, but this is the first time that they've shown a concept's global debut outside of Europe. Here's for India, shows the importance of the market for Renault. And secondly, its design, the exterior design has also been done in conjunction with Renault's design studio in India. After that is that this car is under 4 meters long, it's 3.6 meters long, has a 1.2 liter turbocharged engine, so it kind of fits into our sub 4 meter rule for small cars which means it's hinting at what we could see from a future duster from Renault. And Renault even showcased a new variant of their current compact SUV. It's called the Duster Adventure. This ruggedized duster sports light design tweaks, such as smoked out headlamps and plastic cladding for the sides. These can take thorns and stones without wincing. However, it doesn't have four-wheel drive and it has the same mechanical package as before. On the inside, this duster has a more daring color scheme. Skoda 2 showcased their facelifted Yeti. Changes at the front include a wider grille and Bison-on headlamps with LED daytime running lights incorporated into them. The bonnet and bumper are new as well and at the rear, the tail lamps also get LEDs. Black cladding adds to the ruggedness. New equipment such as keyless entry and go, electrically adjustable driver's seat, cruise control and tire pressure monitoring systems have also been added. The engine options though remain the same as before. The facelifted Yeti will go on sale in the second half of 2014. Meanwhile, other manufacturers are trying to take a shortcut to jump into the compact SUV space. The star of the Fiat stall was the Aventura concept. Although based on the Punto's platform, the Aventura gets 200mm of ground clearance and larger wheels, which will prove quite useful on our roads. Protective skid plates, strips and mouldings on the side and fully functional roof rails add to the rugged image. Expect the Fiat Ventura to go on sale late 2014. On their stall, Toyota had the Etios Cross, which is basically a lever hatchback with additional body cladding all around and a bit more ground clearance. It has a tweaked grille, silver roof rails and other light cosmetic tweaks, all of which toughen up its image. Engine options include the familiar 1.2 and 1.5 litre petrol motors and of course the 1.4 litre diesel. Toyota is accepting bookings for the Etios Cross now. Maruti though was taking a different approach to the compact crossover route. Now Maruti is calling this car a concept but this is actually a production car, the SX4 S Cross. Now what makes it so interesting is that this crossover will be going up against the likes of Nissan Serrano and Renault's Duster. So this is a slightly rugged, modern car that is apt even for the urban environment. Key for Maruti will be to manufacture as much of this car here in India and that's something that they're working hard on. They're also looking at engine options but you can expect it to come with petrol and diesel options. Now clearly on the inside this is more sedan-like in the way it feels, the way it's built. You're not sitting all that high up, but the interiors themselves are very impressive. Everything feels very chunky and solid, well-built. You have climate control, you have a touchscreen music system interface over here. It's got airbags. And of course, this car also has four-wheel drive on offer. But when it comes to India, I think Maruti may come in with the two-wheel drive version first. There was also a concept saloon car at the Maruti stall. It's called the Siaz and it previews Maruti's upcoming SX4 replacement. 
its low slung styling though won't make it to production however the concept car's look is in sync with suzuki's modern design language and the overall look is quite sporty while maruti was just teasing us with the sias toyota had their all new corolla altis on display at their stall as you can see the safe styling of the former model is gone and it has a more youthful look another big difference especially for those who will be using the back seat is that the wheelbase is now 100 mm longer which means there's more room on the inside there were many saloons that had renewed their punch for the indian market like fiat's linea which has finally received a makeover it has newly restyled plastic bits at the front and rear and additional patches of chrome all of this helps give the linea a richer and more striking look now i don't know some of you may like what's happened on the outside some of you may not but what's happened on the inside is something most of you will really like i mean i love this new design soft flowing dash with nice flowy lines and when you look at it it all feels flush and smooth the music system flush inside but it has this nice glossy black finish all around it even here for this small storage bin on the top the end effect is to make the interiors just feel flusher and richer and that's really great news for potential linear customer the linear also gets lots of equipment there's cruise control a new audio system with bluetooth auxiliary and usb connectivity reverse parking sensors rain sensing wipers and more at the ford stall there was the facelifted fiesta this car wears that upside down trapezoidal grill or the aston martin grill and there are other tweaks to the design all of which make this car look immediately more appealing Mechanically though the Fiesta remains unchanged. Like the Ford, this Renault also comes with cosmetic updates to boost its social status. The grill on the Fluence is now identical across the Renault range. The Fluence also has minor tweaks at the rear. However, on the inside or under the skin, the Fluence remains unchanged. It has also been confirmed at the expo that Renault's MPV, the Logi, which shares its platform with the Duster, will also go on sale in India in early 2015. Now, Bajaj has sprung more than just one surprise on us here at the Auto Expo. First and foremost, we have the Pulsar SS, the Super Sport. But the surprise is that this isn't the 200 that they've shown us. This is the 400. As you can see the design is really aggressive. We got five pictures of the motorcycle and renderings and it lives up to all of that really aggressive sporty looking motorcycle. Now in performance terms you can expect a lot from this because the motor is the 375 cc motor that we've seen on the KDM 390 Duke and in terms of BHP while there are no specific figures yet you can expect it to be about 40 BHP just a little less than what the KDM has on offer. This motor on the Pulsar is also fuel injected but of course it has a triple spark plug head for the Pulsar. Now the front perimeter frame might be the same but this motorcycle has been updated for the more powerful motor which means it has a different swing arm uh, the exhaust also comes out of the side and it now gets medzilla rubber. Now there are some really nice touches as well you can see the integrated grab handles in the rear panels of the SS and that aside Bajaj have been really adventurous with the rear stop lamp it's integrated is hanging off the rear Now the other surprise from Bajaj here is the CS400 yes the engine is shared with the SS but look at the rest of the bike this is taking the Pulsar family into a different direction this is a power cruiser and the C in stands for cruising and S is for sport. This motorcycle you can see the forks are more splayed out. It has a more cruiser stance and it really strikes a very very strong and powerful image here. This though is not as close to production right now as the SS.
A little further away, Harley Davidson wowed the crowds with the launch of their Street 750. The price tag was just simply astonishing. It's the next chapter of leisure motorcycling here in India. We've launched the Street 750 here in India at 4.1 lakhs. Bookings will start on March 1st, uh, all over our 13 showrooms across the country, and we expect them to start making deliveries in June.